This is a wiring and setup guide for Corsair's RM850X shift modular power supply unit, which as you can see, comes with a lot of different cables. I'm gonna talk you through the setup and wiring process for this power supply unit and show you where all these cables plug in and the things that you need to know in your build to make life a lot easier. The RM850X shift has its connectors on one side rather than on the end, which makes things quite interesting and easy for the installation in your case. And I'll show you that later on. But I'm gonna go through the various different steps of installing all the different cables and make it really clear where they plug in so it's easy to see outside the build to begin with, just so you can get a clear view of where things plug in. I'm gonna talk you through each and every cable that you can see laid out here to make things really clear for you and hopefully make your life easier. And I'm going to start with the motherboard power, which as you can see, there are three different cables for, and the motherboard parts plug in on the left-hand side. You can see it marked motherboard on the power supply unit. The cable is split into two parts and they need to go into these top ports in the left-hand corner, which I can see marked in this instance. So there's two different ports split here for this 24 pin power cable. So you'll see on one end, it's two little cables. And because this is a type five power supply unit, it means the pins on the power supply end are smaller than the ones that connect to the other devices. So you can see when you put them together, they're quite a bit smaller and they're also marked type five, whereas the part that plugs into the motherboard is a little bit fatter. So with all of these cables, you need to make sure that these are pushed all the way in so that the clip that you can see on there hooks in place and clicks into place so it's solidly connected. This is very important, especially with the 24 pin power cable because you'll find otherwise your system might not power on. Now, just to demo where it plugs in, I'll show you this on the desk so it's really easy and clear. And then I'll show you in the system later on. Obviously, you'd wait until your motherboard's installed in the case. But you need to make sure this cable's flipped the right way around because you'll notice that it has a little plastic clip on one side of it. And the port on the motherboard has a little notch on it where that clip sits over and clicks into place to make sure that it's secure there and won't come out. Then you have two additional cables, which are marked CPU. These are EPS power cables that connect to the top left of your motherboard. Some motherboards will have two ports. Some will just have one. Some have one and one four pin. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. But you can see once again, it's type five on one end, CPU markings on the other. So you plug the type five end into the port marked motherboard on the bottom left here, or in the PCIe slash CPU ports just next to that. So make sure these two cables are plugged in on the power supply end there, basically quite close to where the motherboard connections are. And then the other end of those cables runs up to the top left of the motherboard and plugs in. You'll notice these also have little hooks on them as mentioned with the previous ones. So they'll just hook over the edge of the plastic port on the motherboard. Seen from a different angle, this is what that looks like. You can see those plugging in here. Now, once again, obviously don't do this just yet. You need to make sure your motherboard's fully installed in the case first. So I'll show you the process for that later on, but I just wanted to make it clear where these connect up. Now, in some cases, you might find that you have a different style of motherboard and you might have one like this that has one eight pin and one four pin connection that need to be connected instead. And in order to do that, you just need to split the CPU end of the power cables apart. So you'll see both these cables will pull apart like this. You can see there's little clips that hold them in place on the inside. But if necessary, you can tug one of them or both of them apart so that it can be used like that in a motherboard that requires it. Now, most motherboards usually have two eight pins in my experience. But if you do have a motherboard that requires a four pin, this is the way you do it. So you can just split those open and plug them into the motherboard really easily. Next up, I'm going to concentrate on PCIe power cables. These are for your graphics card. As you can see, you get three of these power cables with the RM850X. And what you'll see is that they look like this. So two of them look like this. We've got Type 5 connector on one end and a PCIe connector on the other. It's six pin with two additional connectors, making it eight pin total. They have to be pinched together to be put into the graphics card. And I'll show you that in a minute. But you get two of these cables, making it easy to install in a GPU that requires two cables. And then you have a third cable that looks like this. Now, this is slightly different because there's a pigtail connector on it. So you've got a connector and then an additional connector on the same cable. Now this is useful for other things, and I'll show you what I mean by that later on, but I'd recommend saving this unless you have a graphics card that uses three connectors, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. But in this instance, I'm using a Gigabyte RTX 3090 for demonstration purposes. 
you plug the Type 5 end of the connector on the bottom right hand side in the slots marked PCIe and CPU as you can see here. Same logic as before, watch out for the little plastic clip, make sure you push that in, make sure it clicks into place on both ends, both on the power supply and on the graphics card. But you'll see that you can only plug these in one way round and you need to make sure that you do push them in fully and that they're fully seated and click into place. Now on the other end, you've got these two connectors, as I said, you've got a six pin and a two pin basically together. Now there are two different ways to plug these in. You can pinch them together as I'm doing here and then push them into the slot, or you can put the two pin part in first and then put the six pin in next to that and slot it in. You do need to make sure that both of these are fully pushed in though. Both parts of them need to be fully pushed in, fully seated. Otherwise you might find that your GPU doesn't run properly. You don't get the maximum frame rate out of it. Maybe it's a bit unstable and other things. So that is something to bear in mind and to watch out for once you've finished your build. Now, and alternatively, you might have an Nvidia GPU, the 40 series and 50 series of graphics card have a different connector on them. It uses what was called the 12 volt high power connector and is now 12 volt 2x6, but that's a different looking connector as you can see here. It's marked PCIe still, and then the type five ends connect up to the power supply unit with the same logic as the other cables I've shown you. So in this instance, you've got two connectors which plug into the CPU and PCIe connectors down the bottom there. You need to make sure they're fully pushed in and fully seated. And then the other end allows you to plug that directly into the graphics card. You might have found your GPU came with a special adapter, which allows you to plug in multiple 8-pin PCIe power cables to it. Instead, you can use this Corsair cable included with your power supply unit. Makes things a little neater and tidier. So you can see the pins there and then the connectors on them. You'll notice it's got a little extra pin out on it. And you need to make sure that's lined up nicely on your GPU and fully plugged in. It's very important, especially if you've got a high-end GPU, you make sure this is fully seated, pushed all the way in, clicked into place, and doesn't have any strain on it. So when you're putting your GPU into your build, you need to make sure that the cable isn't taut, there's plenty of looseness to it, but also more importantly, that it's plugged fully in and seated into that socket nicely and then there won't be any issues. Another use for PCIe power comes in the form of Corsair's IQ Link fan setup. So the IQ Link system allows you to plug in multiple fans into this small controller, which in turn requires PCIe power in order to work. That's the same cable you'd use with your traditional graphics card. So I'd recommend saving the pigtail cable if you can for this, because this will still give the power necessary, but leaving it free for other things. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But this uses the six pin part of that eight pin power connector. So you'll see it also has a little clip on it. It still needs to be hooked up that way, but you use the spare one. So if you've got a GPU with two power connectors on it, you can use this pigtail cable to connect that PCIe power up and to therefore still run this system quite nicely. If however, You've got something like this, a Radeon 9070 XT, which requires three power connectors, then obviously things are a little bit different. So you can see this GPU has three 8-pin PCIe power connectors required. Why we're doing this instance is to use the two cables I showed you initially, the standard ones on your GPU, and then the third one, the pigtail part, you connect that up to the third port on the graphics card and then the other part of that plugs into the iq link controller into this power adapter now this should mean that you can plug in both a three pin gpu and the power for the iq link controller with that setup it might be a bit messy though bear that in mind now on to sata power which are these cables that you'd use for hard disk drives and ssds you have three of those included in the box and as you'll see each of them has multiple connectors on it so you've got the Type 5 connector that plugs into the power supply, and then you've got several other connectors along that chain, which means that you can plug in multiple devices to it, especially SATA drives. So if you want to put multiple SSDs into your system, it's really easy to do. You plug the Type 5 end into the SATA and PATA part of the power supply unit, as you can see there. The other end then connects up to the SSD. In this instance, I'm using a crucial drive. And as you can see, this is a flat connector that has an L-shaped notch in it. So you can only plug it in one way because there's a little bit of plastic that basically sticks to the inside of that. But then you plug that connector in and that's the drive powered. And as I said, you can plug multiple of these drives into that cable because of all the 
extra connectors on it. You're then looking for a SATA data cable, which is usually included with the motherboard, and this will then plug into the drive on the side next to that SATA power connector, and then plugs into the motherboard on the right-hand side on the ports there, and that will then allow the data transfer, obviously, from those drives. So that's how you'd set up and power those, and you could have several of those in your system and in your case quite easily. There are other uses for SATA power as well. You'll see here, for example, that I've got a Corsair USB hub. This allows you to connect up multiple USB devices to your PC really easily. And as you can see, this requires SATA power as well. So those cables that you just use for SSDs can be connected up to this. Now you can get several powered devices like this that you can put into your system that might be particularly helpful with your build. I really like this USB hub, for example. If you have multiple USB devices you need to connect to your motherboard, it can be really handy. But it does need powering, so you need to make sure you've got a spare connector on your SATA power connectors that you can plug this into. There are other Corsair devices too that you might have in your system. Corsair Commander Core, for example, is an older device now, but this is for fan power and RGB connections and sometimes all in one coolers as well. And you'll find that that requires SATA power. So equally, you need to plug things in like that too. Now you might find sometimes if you're trying to plug in multiple devices like this, that are a bit more power hungry, that it pays to use separate SATA cables just to make sure they've got enough power. So if you do find there's any issues with the system with fans not working properly, maybe try a dedicated cable specifically for that rather than using multiple connectors on one cable. You also have these PATA cables included in there. They're used for custom loop systems generally, for pumps and reservoir combos, for example. In most builds, you probably won't use them. They're very rarely used in other things, but they would plug into the SATA and PATA ports in the top right of the power supply unit or that top row there in the same way that the SSDs and hard disk drives are. It's the same sort of thing. And it's also the same in that you've got one connector on the power supply and then multiple connectors on the cable. So you can plug in multiple devices to it quite easily if you need to. But as I said, you might not use this cable and that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. Just install the cables that you need for your system and your build. And that's the good thing about modular power supplies because you can just plug in the cables that you need in your case. So I've shown you all the different ones. You might not need all of them, for example. But what I do now is once you've worked out, plug the cables in that you're going to be using. It's easier to do it now than it is when it's inside the case. You can do it, and that's the benefit of the shift power supply because they should be accessible, but it's easier, I find, still to do it beforehand. You then want to install the power supply unit into the system in a way where the fan's going to face outside the case. So in this case, for example, face down. So the fan's then drawing air from below through the vents below it and through the dust filters there. You've got four screws with a hexagonal top included in the power supply box. You might well find them with your case as well, so you should have spares. And these screw into the back of the case and will allow you to secure it in four corners around the edges of the power supply. So you can see them screwed in here, for example. And this makes it easy to secure and put into the case firmly. Once that's done, you're then obviously going to run the cables through the system. Now, I'd recommend considering cable management at this point with the two 8-pin CPU power connectors here, for example, I'm cable tying them together because they're thin and flat, which makes them easy to navigate through the case and to install in a neat way. But just keeping them together means they don't end up coming loose or getting messy. So cable tie and then cut the cable ties so that they're neat as well. And then make the use of the Velcro loops and hooks around the case as well, especially for the 24-pin power cable, and then connect those up. So once the motherboard's installed into the case, you then go through the process of putting those cables in. So as I showed you before, two 8-pin CPU power connectors in the top left. Make sure they're firmly clicked into place. The 24-pin power connector plugs in on the right-hand side here. Again, make sure that's pushed in firmly and seated down. Then your power cable for your GPU as well. Again, make sure that's fully seated and isn't taut or tugged on or pressed against by the glass to make sure that's going to work perfectly. And you should find you've then got a system that works nicely. I've got detailed wiring and setup guides in the entirety of the PC linked in the description that you might find useful as well as other content too. Thanks very much for watching. 
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.